Well, for more on Turkey's elections and its economy, it's always good to welcome Starhan Hatopoulou back to the show. He's the CEO of Berry and CGTN's Global Economics Analyst. Welcome back to my Pleasure Starhan. to be here. So, obviously, a lot of blame always tends to fly around when an economy isn't doing well. Um, what do you see as the most significant factors in Turkey getting to this point? Well, there were some um, misguided policies, especially after the crisis in August when the lira uh, lost a lot of its value. When I was there, actually, it happened when I was there, and I couldn't believe the speed with which it fell. But if you look at the policies that have been um, going on to that point and even after that point, in terms of economic growth, Turkey has really focused on private consumption to the point that prompting banks to lend money at very, very low interest rates, foreign currency uh, borrowing from corporations, uh, which skyrocketed the corporate debt overall in U.S. dollars. And now, when any time the economy slows down or any kind of problem happens and lira is hit, uh, Turkey is hostage to this, these kinds of crises. Now, we did see that President Erdogan blamed the U.S. for the country's economic shortfall. So talk about some of the external issues that are also weighing on Turkey's economy. Well, the U.S., J.P. Morgan, uh, London in general, uh, he's been blaming quite a bit of these. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting that whenever there's a problem like this in the, in the economy, uh, the fingers always point to the foreign factors here. But if you look at the actual, what happened uh, on, on Wednesday was uh, foreign investors shorted the Turkish lira because the J.P. Morgan report said, look, um, the economy is not doing well, we're worried about it, and they have every right to say that to their clients. And then, with the governments uh, coming in, the banks were told not to lend the money, so the investors could not cover their short position, which caused all the problems. Um, but that was something that investors do, foreign investors do, they're capitalists. You know, you can buy put options here or short the market. Uh, the external numbers, when you look at Turkey's um, situation, the current account deficit as well as the external obligations that we talked about, are all a factor now, and the macroeconomic environment prompted this crisis. So in terms of the tools that uh, Turkey's economy needs to, to get propped back up, what would be the most effective in the short and longer term? Well, in the short term, immediately, well, let's, let's get the election going, because nothing is going to be done, obviously, we have this on, 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 on Sunday, but the creation of a bad bank is very important because the uh, non-performing loans are, are increasing in, in ratio. And uh, restructuring those debts would not solve the problem at this point because the level is too high. Getting the private sector involved a little bit more, getting foreign investors, somehow giving them the confidence to come in and uh, maybe buy back some of those bad debts uh, is, is the thing to do because of this, this uh, debt overhang. In the long term, they have got to do a lot of macroeconomic reforms. They have to create jobs going to uh, industries other than construction, other than energy, and um, improve education system in Turkey. All of these are long-term goals, but short-term things need to be done first, and that's uh, dealing with the bad bank problem. So how are these economic changes affecting everyday life for Turkish people? It's not good. Uh, as you know, the party is, is being supported by a very strong base. But even within that base now, there are some questions. Uh, and one of the reasons is, is inflation. We're talking about 20%, I think 19, point, 19 handle uh, was this, this month. Uh, people are upset, especially food inflation. Rochelle, Turkey used to be self-sufficient in food. Uh, but the plan of getting uh, more people from agriculture to industries uh, was a good idea, but it didn't take care of uh, a lot of things in the agricultural sector. So now Turkey is importing food that it used to produce. And when the lira loses value, all of a sudden we have very big uh, food inflation. And that's not going well with people in Istanbul, Ankara, and other, other big cities. So then is it fair to say that what happens with Sunday's election is, in effect, a referendum on Erdogan and his government? I think it is. I think it is this time. Even more important to me, they have been losing, the party has been losing support since 2015. They have always been there uh, as the majority party, but they have been losing support. And were it not for the Nationalist Action Party supporting them, uh, they wouldn't be able to change a lot of the things in the, in the constitutional changes that we've seen. So this performance is very important. If the AK party loses support, what will the uh, Nationalist Party do? Are they going to withdraw their support? Um, and are they going to lose the big cities in the mayoral election, Ankara, Istanbul? These are the big things to watch uh, in a couple of days. Um, and just very quickly, how would you say that Tur what happens with Turkey's economy is going to impact the global economy? Well, it's an emerging market. And uh, thankfully, things are a little more calm right now, uh, so it's not going to be an immediate impact. 
But with the U.S. economy slowing, uh, I know everybody's talking about patience now with the interest rates. But uh, if the U.S. economy starts going up even a little more, uh, then interest rate increases will be up there again, and that is going to have an impact on emerging markets. And everybody is looking at big countries, how they can handle themselves. And Turkey is a big emerging market. Uh, we'll see if, if the country comes out of this crisis without that much damage, it will be okay. But there could be some kind of a contagion too. All right, something to watch. Always good to have you. Sarah Hanhatafolu there, CEO of Berry and CGTN's Global Economics Analyst.